You cannot mess up life. It is a beautiful experience with a spectrum of emotions, pain, joy, all of it. And whether you are on a journey where you learned a lot from the positive or you learned a lot from the negative, it is an experience. And so once you realize that, you get to ask yourself, okay, am I on the aligned path? In order to know that, ask yourself big questions. Like, why am I here? What is my vision? What experience of life do I want to have? And then look in your life and say, how much of what I have is yes, aligned to that and no, it's not. And what can I shift? Hey, y'all, it's Costa. Today, I'm here with my guest, Jerry Page, author, transformational mindset coach, strategic pathway advisor, and founder of The Now Experiment. Jerry, we couldn't be more thrilled and honored to have you on the show today. As this episode is a total departure from our usual content, I want to start the episode with a bit of background about you, your journey from corporate leadership to becoming a mindset coach, and how you started The Now Experiment. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here, especially for an episode that sounds like you're pioneering some new space. Yeah, so a little bit about my journey. I started off, I think, as many people probably do on what I call the ladder of life. So... Uh, this ladder begins whenever we go into grade school. And there's nothing right or wrong or good or bad about the ladder of life. It's just the normative expectation of what comes next in your life and sort of the path that you walk. So I went through school. I went to college. I got the internships. I got the job. And I spent basically all of my 20s climbing the ladder to become eventually the head of marketing for an impact investing company at 28. Yeah, I felt pretty cool about myself. And also, I noticed the flip side of that, which was that the fulfillment and the happiness and the joy and the room to sort of reap the fruits and experience what I had that I expected to happen once I got to that point that I had been projecting out into the future were not necessarily there. It's like I'd gotten to the point where X marks the spot, like the treasure is going to be here. And I opened it up and the treasure was not inside. <laughs> and this is such a, for many that I share this story with, it's relatable in that we on the ladder of life are sometimes taught that like there's something in the future for us. If we can just get, if we can create external circumstances that eventually like that thing will be found. And I realized I think this is part of like the tie in of like a midlife crisis or something like that. You get to this point and you realize it's not there. And so I did what any millennial would do and went all eat, pray, love on everyone. <laughs> I was like, I'm going on a solo backpacking trip. And I packed up my little backpack and went on a solo trip to Vietnam and Southeast Asia and Bali. And it was there that I met all of these new people and I had all these new experiences and I realized there are so many different possibilities in life in terms of the paths that you take and the, the ways that you create your existence that lie totally outside of this ladder, this normative ladder, which was frankly all I had ever considered before. I had never considered other possibilities. And so I returned back to my job and I kept working it, but I was doing things a lot differently. I started diving into personal growth and development. I started getting really serious about my health mentally, physically, emotionally. And eventually I just realized that this job, the, the corporate career I was in, it was not what I chose. It was what I had fallen into on the ladder and pointed all my awareness and direction towards, but it wasn't truly what I had consciously chosen. So I left and I started my own business. I started out as business coaching. And then we went to life coaching because for anyone who's ever had a business coach, you know, it's about 60% mindset and the rest is strategy. <laughs> and then, you know, in the beginning of this year, I asked myself the question that I ask myself a lot and I encourage other people to ask themselves too, is how can I get myself even more in alignment with what I want? with my vision, with the experience of life that I want to create. And that is when I birthed my new company, The Now Experiment, which is all about the thread that has been present since the very beginning of my personal growth journey and also my business journey, which is presence. That if I can be here now, right now, and I can notice more of what is inside of me, that I can not only enjoy life more, I can access more creativity, more productivity, 
higher quality of life, feel more alive while I'm alive. And it is the portal through which I can create a better life as well. And so that is my work now with the now experiment is helping people be present. Absolutely fascinating. So this is going to be a broad question. So please feel free to answer however you'd like. But generally speaking, okay, we talk about this mindset shift. How does our mindset shift over time? Mm, That's such a good, good question. I think what we'll realize is that just because we age or get older, spend Mm -hmm. more time on this earth, we're not necessarily um, becoming more, I'll call it mentally mature. (laughs) So there's probably people, you know, in your life who are 25 who might feel like they have a better grasp on a perspective that serves them in life than some people who are 60 or 70 or 80. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there are two pockets here on one side. It's the pocket of with time, There are an increase of intended and unintended experiences in life that give you an opportunity to cycle through the process of mental transformation, right? Okay. But then the other piece of that is how willing and aware and informed you are to go through that cycle, right? is Is it fair to say that the way that we are conditioned, that by the, because you're talking about how, you know, you got to you know, the position of corporate leadership, you know, you're head of marketing and you've been conditioned to think like you should achieve all that success. You open the treasure box, there's nothing inside. A lot of people, they, they have that same type of dynamic, but in retirement. So they work Mm. their entire lives, they retire, and then they have something like a chronic health, a a serious medical event or a illness that turns into a chronic illness and their quality of life diminishes. And it's in the same capacity where when you open up the treasure chest and you expect there to be, you know, just this beautiful prize, it's Mm. all sort of the, the rug is somewhat pulled out from under you. And so is it fair to say that when you get these opportunities, you should capitalize on it because that's your way of saying, don't look forward, look where you're at right now and appreciate it. Is that right? Yes. That is exactly the type of lived experience that people run into in life. Sometimes it's sort of catastrophic. Mm -hmm. It's like a big event or it's an illness, or it's just simply the process of getting closer to the end of your life where suddenly it's like a wake up call. And it is, as you described, an opportunity in some sense, to pivot, to change course with the way that you're perceiving. And there are three parts to that transformative process. The first is having an awareness of the thoughts. A lot of us walk around, we don't even know, we haven't even like captured what they are. We haven't even realized that they, that we are not our thoughts, right? So there's that awareness part. Then there's the perspective. How do we choose to view and engage with these thoughts? And then the third stage is going to be choosing how to move forward with them. Fascinating. And that right there, that is your opportunity whenever these experiences arise. So I want to ask a question about, let's just say an individual doesn't take those opportunities and they get to Mm -hmm. what's called the final act, right? We know Mm -hmm. belief impacts every level of our life at every age. And I think sometimes it's easy to overlook how it's playing into our later years. For your clients who Mm -hmm. are entering their final act, what advice do you have? Mm. it's so much about your meaning making, Mm -hmm. right? So two people can live the exact same life and have the exact same experiences and have a completely totally different quality of life because of the filter they have in their mind in terms of meaning making. And so my advice, whenever you get to this final act is to take a good look at what meaning you are making of the things that are outside of your Mm -hmm. control and where might you still have influence and control in your life? Because we always have Absolutely. something where you have yeah. power to choose differently. How do you know when you're on the right path and how can we evaluate where we are and start to take inventory of our mental well-being? Hmm. I would say, first of all, I would probably take a look at the word right mm-hmm. path and ask myself, am I on an aligned okay. path? Knowing that you can't mess up life. (laughs) (laughs) That's profound. (laughs) Let's say that again. (laughs) You really, 
You cannot mess up life. It is a beautiful experience with a spectrum of emotions, pain, joy, all of it. And whether you are on a journey where you learned a lot from the positive or you learned a lot from the negative, it is an experience. Mm -hmm. And so once you realize that, you get to ask yourself, okay, am I on the aligned path? In order to know that, ask yourself big questions like, why am I here? What is my vision? What experience of life do I want to have? Yeah. Right? And then look in your life and say, how much of what I have is yes, aligned to that? And no, it's not. And what can I shift in, internally and how externally? How does someone who may have specific goals for their life, um, goals that of certain things that they want to experience during their lifetime, um, you know, as you're going, is, is that something that you should really work towards or, mm. you know, like for example, if, uh, if it's a monet if it's a monetary goal, is that something you should work towards or do you need to reevaluate how much value you place on money or, but what if it's like something, say for example, um, to find peace in your life, you know what mm. I mean? Uh, like that's one of your goals. Um, and you say like, okay, by the time I'm 55, I want to find peace. Is that how we should approach life or are we putting ourselves too much into a box? Um, are we again trying to search for that treasure chest that we will open and may not find what we want? Yeah, I would. Okay. There's a few, a few part response. One regarding the peace, peace, happiness, joy, these feelings can be accessed within us at any moment. Nice. And that's the secret. There's no external thing that needs to happen. That's a lie. Okay. Um, there can be things that are happening in your life that create sadness, that create grief. And in that grief, you can find a pocket of joy, right? Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to like bypass the feelings. But in this moment right now, if I invited you, for example, to get your body in a specific place and then to call in the sensation of joy, you would be able to get a little bit closer to it probably than you are right yeah. now. And that's our superpower. Nice. So in that regard, the treasure chest is not outside of the moment. It is always right here and accessible to us. And that's a big part of the now experiment. Fascinating. Uh, can I just ask before we keep going, like, when did you know? So, I mean, you're obviously, you know, you like, like I said earlier, you've got this amazing career. You've got all the opportunities. Um, when did you know that you, was there an inflection point? Was there something, an event that happened? Like, when did you know that it was time for you to make a change in your life? And how did that feel? Mm. You don't have to get into super was... much detail, but I'm just curious. Yeah, there was, I remember the first inflection point and I'll say there have been hundreds nice. of inflection points since it's a journey, yeah. right? And it's a continuation. But with the very first one, it was, um, just as much, it was more terrifying and sad than it was exciting because there's a shadow side to almost mm -hmm. everything, right? There's pros and cons sure. to everything. And so a part of realizing your power to create your life and to access certain things in certain moments, whenever you realize that power, you also, in that same acknowledgement, recognize, oh, I haven't been using this power in the past. And there's a little bit of not blame, not shame, not guilt, but there's a little bit of responsibility that I might have to accept about not accessing that in the mm -hmm. past. And so there's like two sides of the coin. So that first inflection point was like, oh, a little rough. Yeah. And that can be tricky for people. But moving through that, then you get to what your true power is. And I realized like, okay, I haven't been living life the way that I wanted to, but now I know better and now I can do better. And so I'm going to choose that path. I love that. Everything in life is impertinent. And as we age, we tend to sense that impertinence more than ever before. Do you have any strategies to alleviate some of the fear and anxiety we feel about growing old and facing our own mortality? Yes. So impermanence is the state of life in every moment, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
our life is no less impermanent at the age of 60 or 70 or 80 as it is whenever we're five or six years old. Um, there's a higher statistical likelihood that you might have fewer years in your life towards the end, but really it's more like this thing that's always been there is just getting a little bit more in your face. And so there are people who live even at a young age, um, from a place of like acknowledging that everything in life is, is not going to last. And the question with presence is, can I access joy, enjoyment, fulfillment, love, connection, the ways that I want to feel, whatever they are, can I access that in this moment with what is present for me without needing it to last forever or needing it, the experience of it to last a specific amount of time in order for me to value it and in order for me to appreciate it, right? Because if we can live from a place of every single moment, has like a life within itself, then we're no longer thinking about, Oh, well, it's not going to last. And then cutting out the joy from underneath its legs. Right. I mean, this conversation plays at, you know, as, as, as we were starting the episode, I kind of said that this is a relative segue uh, or divergence from what we typically talk about, which is long-term care caregiving, which we are about to talk Mm. a little bit about caregiving, but ultimately it's, it's the, it's the psychological, um, underpinnings of what it means to be alive. And, and what's yes. really interesting about this conversation, I think more than, than anything else, other than of course, realizing that you need to be in the moment is the fact that when we talk about, and I think I'm going to start practicing what I preach. When we talk about long-term care, when we talk about people that, um, find themselves in a position where they may have to sacrifice a certain level of independence because they suffer from a a debilitating disease. What a lot of people can take from this conversation is that you have an opportunity to, um, how do I put this, Uh, catalog almost all of the great uh, moments and times and experiences that you had in, instead of being afraid of where you're headed, you are actually looking forward because this is another, just another chapter in your life. Yeah. And I, I think that's powerful. And I think, I think I need to incorporate more about being present in the current stage of people's lives versus just talking about, you know, the, the struggles essentially. And I think as a, as a human, as a human race, we typically tend to gravitate towards the negative struggles as opposed to talking about the positive, you know, moments that we've experienced. Absolutely. It's a survival protective mechanism. It makes total sense why it's there. And we sitting at the head of the table of our mind with all of our protectors sitting around it with all their fears and thoughts, and we get to choose. And so with that survival mechanism, what do you think is the most impactful way to stay alert and aware of our mindset and take ownership over the things that we can and cannot control? Yes. This is where awareness Mm -hmm. comes in so much. And I think two specific tools that help with awareness are journaling, like something about putting pen to paper and just allowing a flow of what is in the mind allows you to really see what it is, to pull it out of the mind and name it so then you can do something with it. And then the second one I really love is a walk and talk. Um, so putting in your headphones, so people might think you're on the phone and talking to yourself. Some people, I actually do this. I do, I use the app otter.ai, which records and transcribes what you're saying. And I just say my thoughts out loud. And whenever you get them out, you'll notice it's a very different experience than keeping them in your mind. You can actually like allow yourself to go forward with a thought and get yourself like, oh, okay, I'm actually like speaking a lot of fear right now. What would happen if I started believing that things could turn out very well? Exactly. Right. So bringing them to the forefront in whatever way you would like to get them out of the mind. I I do the same. (laughs) I don't, I don't record them though. Probably I should probably consider recording them, but when I run in the mornings, I uh, sometimes have a mental battle, especially if I'm sitting and sometimes it lasts like months (laughs) months <laughs> like you know it always yeah. comes up over the course of the run at some point but I just I constantly am like working through it and I think ultimately it's because I just don't think that um I have a bad habit of making us uh like a very quick decision 
And so I feel mm-hmm. like if I talk continuously talk through it and talk through it, it may give me a different perspective. But I will tell you this. Mm. Most of the time, the first time that I thought about that thought is the direction that I take. But I just, you know what I mean? Yes. I just still, I have to just go through all of the different scenarios and stuff like that. So I think that's really interesting. Very interesting. That can be the difference between like, some people might call it yeah. a gut response. Some people might call it an inner knowing. Some people might call it the body response or intuition. There's that. And then the mind wants to go in a million different yes. directions with it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a great question that I want to ask before we finish the show. But before we wrap up, I want to talk about caregivers and ask a question for anyone who is currently caring for someone else. How can we show up every day and be more present for ourselves and the ones we care for? Mm. In addition to practicing the awareness that I just mentioned, I think there's a big question to ask yourself every day. It's really quite simple. What do I most need Mm -hmm. today? Just waking up, asking yourself that one question, and then making a commitment and a promise to give yourself that one thing. Absolutely. So... Here's what I ask you before we finish. What's it like living your life as like one out of 100,000 people on this earth? Just a very unique perspective. You have sort of unplugged yourself from every single social construct that are, uh, that we know as <laughs> humanity. What's, what's it like? It's yeah. freedom. It's absolute liberation to live my life as art. And that's what I hope to help everyone else do is to realize what what wants to be expressed mm. in me. What do I want to choose? And how can I make my own life my Do you own feel, art? do you meet people like yourself often? I mean, do you, you do? Really? I so do. it's, okay. Mm-hmm. So it, we are, our network is, is essentially an extension of ours. So if we change somewhat of our mindset, then we can also change the, the people that we find ourselves associating with. Yes. If you start making external aligned actions in alignment with internal desire and knowing you are going to start getting yourself in situations to meet the people and find your tribe. You might think they don't exist, I love that. but they do. We We always like to end the show with a call to action. What is one practice that our listeners can adopt today to embrace the mindset of now? Mm. This is a practical exercise and it's sensory. So in any moment where you feel a little bit detached or not here, notice the five senses. Ground into the now. What do I see? What do I smell? What do I taste? What do I hear? What do I feel? And then deepen into that and notice in the body what sensations are there. And if you can take it even a step further, what do I feel? Access to what you can feel or what is within you outside of the mind is a superpower. And if you can do that, then you can be more present in any moment. 